Hello, viewers. Uh, welcome to DG Bytes. And today we have Raghav with me. So recently we were talking about an interesting topic about a new feature that has been introduced in Snowflake, and uh, it is called as dynamic tables. So I really want to uh, discuss this feature uh, together with Raghav. So Raghav, hand over to you. Go forward. Thank you, Weber. For so. I recently attended a lot of trainings on Snowflake and I'm working on Snowflake also a lot. I work on, work on many databases. Uh, so one of the biggest problem what everybody has is maintaining all these pipelines, right? When the data is coming from one place, it needs to drop and it needs to be orchestrated. So, and there are two kinds of data sets. I'm going a little bit technical. One is called an incremental data set and one is called a full load. Uh, to maintain all this, we write a lot of logic, maybe in store procedures, we check what is the data in the source, we compare all this, and we build a pipeline and make sure the data is flowing perfectly. Uh, but what if this entire process with limited capabilities, not extraordinarily, is kind of orchestrated and automated? It makes life of a data engineer very easy because he or she can maintain it easily. It might not work in all situations because it's just a new feature, but why don't I share my screen and talk about this new feature? Okay. That so, would be perfect, yeah. Yeah, so this is a good article which basically talks about it and I'll paste it in the description below. But what are the different challenges? As I, as, as I kept saying that, hey, transforming the data is already a big thing. And whenever the new data arrives, maintaining uh, the dependencies, scheduling the data again, and it requires some maintenance and logic. So, okay, we wrote a new logic. Now there is data which is being processed incrementally um, and something has gone wrong. So we have to kill the load. We have to truncate load data. We have to do a lot of uh, maintenance job for it. So it's not quickly done. Uh, so today in Snowflake, the way it happens is there is something called a stream. Stream is it checks all the base tables and we write something called which is a stream. Stream is like create stream. That's a different syntax. So we have create stream from these two tables. Oh, whatever is the incremental data coming in makes it to a story, storage point. Stream A and stream B, what you see here. Stream A and stream B, they store the incremental data. And on top of that stream, we write a task. So data is flowing in. We checked incrementally. Yesterday it was 100 records. Today it was 102 records. We checked two records. That is the stream flowing in. And we wrote a task that, hey, there are two records. Now just add four records, which is two, two records on top, two records and two. Add four records to the final table using a task. So if you see, if I have in this architecture on top, I have to maintain three things, stream A, stream B, task C, three things. Now with dynamic tables, what has happened is this has been combined. I can write a simple select statement combining these two tables and call it as dynamic. Snowflake automatically understands with some limitations, where it is an incremental refresh, where it is a full refresh, we can specify a little bit of areas and loads it into target table. So the maintenance is cut down by three. If it's just for one use case, imagine if it is like 100 use cases, so it's 300 times if I have, so imagine the amount of technical debt, I can get it down. I am sure there will be necessities where you might have to store procedure, Try to store procedure differently. You might have to insert data in a different mechanism, but that is the biggest advantage of dynamic tables. Uh, yeah, we can write SQL statements. I'm, I'm gonna show an example too. I have a demo ready, but if you see, if many of our viewers know what is a materialized view, think dynamic table as a materialized view, but 10 notches or 15 notches up there somewhere, right? So you can choose 
materialized views at a certain point. You can choose dynamic tables at a certain point. You can choose streams and graphs at a certain point. I can go in detail, but there's a lot of information. But this is what I want excited about. Uh, do you think I should show a demo to everybody right now, or how do you think? Yeah, I, it would be good if we, you can show us uh, one demo that, that could uh, easily uh, understandable for uh, the viewers that how we do it uh, practically. Yeah, so I think I wrote a quick code. So this is whoever has been attending uh, Snowflake, they'll definitely know what tables these are. But I have some schemas where it is veggies, fruits and flowers. So I have two tables, which is a root depth and all the details so and with this we say that all the um, vegetables who have a certain root depth code give me out the way what we do is let's say if this is the code the way we run it is this is how we run it uh, that's a select statement uh, perfect awesome this is easy uh, you initially you create a view on top of it but let's say something happens and root depth a table loses data and when you're writing a view on top of it, automatically the view would not have any rows because the root mm -hmm. depth code join has no data, right? But a dynamic table, a dynamic table keeps the data, analyzes, oh, something has gone wrong. Looks like root depth data, there is change. The column name has changed or uh, the data has been dropped. Let's not refresh it. But I've, I've taken two steps forward. And how does the, uh, creation of it work so it's a simple select statement calling it as a dynamic table if you see this is create or replace dynamic table and you can specify a lag when do you want to refresh it one minute 30 minutes one day two days one month two months you can specify and what warehouse you are using so this is the warehouse what we are using here compute warehouse and once you mention this syntax and do it and run it, a dynamic table is created. This dynamic table now will not refresh till one minute. And how can you see those dynamic tables? Let me quickly refresh this. Garden plants, veggie schema. You see here, there's a new dynamic table which is created where automatically it has a lag of one minute. And it was, if you see that, refresh cycle is incremental yes yeah so i have not done anything to maintain an incremental refresh whereas earlier i have to do something to maintain an incremental refresh if there is something um, and it is one minute because no rows no data is there right now let's try to run it um, now because it will not be initialized but if i do select star from so if you see here it is not yet initialized we're doing a one minute we can probably chat that one minute and we can see when the data refreshes and i can also show if how a hard refresh can be done but after one minute this should refresh by itself so that is the advantage of a dynamic table there are a lot of points. We'll come back to it in 30 seconds. A lot of areas, like if you see here, you can specify the lag in seconds, minutes, hours, and days. That is what exactly we did. And these are called declarative pipelines. That is the word they are using. And I like the word. So how the flow works, also we can see. When we open up the graph-based methodology, I'll try to see if, um, if I can show you that too. But that is one... Um, thing next is it's automatic and intelligent incremental refresh um, there is a lot of snapshot data what we are doing and i'm also learning about it but i think it's nice uh, it works uh, pretty easily okay i think it should be one minute let's go back and check you see the data is there yes right so after a minute it ran now it will refresh and uh, I could have not even gone there. I could have just expanded my garden plants, veggies, uh, and dynamic tables. If you remember, it was zero rows before. Yes, correct. Now we have 41 rows there. So, so if two new rows come in, 
I can add, uh, I don't have that demo in, but if I have two new rows added to root depth table, I can get 43 rows forward automatically because it's incremental. So if uh, I try to uh, summarize what you said is, mm -hmm. so uh, this dynamic table concept uh, really um, saves or uh, solves the pain of the developers who are doing regular incremental loads uh, mm -hmm. because it uh, basically uh, like reduces the number of steps they were following uh, to do this incremental load where they are comparing the data, then they are uh, loading the data, and finally it is visible to them. Now it's been automatically done where all these steps which were manually driven by individual is now uh, it done in a single step automatically. Correct, that's it. That's it. Thank you, you absolutely nailed it. Yeah. Thank you, Rago, for sharing this concept. And I think uh, this new feature of Snowflake will definitely help our viewers to implement it practically in their scenarios and solve their lot of problems where they have to manually uh, do these different incremental loads uh, in multiple steps. But now uh, it can be done automatically into a single step without uh, doing a lot of stre stressful configurations. Uh, just so one imagine, step and then. Yeah, one thing imagine, right? If, I, if you're a data engineer, what would you have done? You would have created a table, created a lot of DDL. Uh, what is the column name? What is the data type? What is, is it where care 50, 25? Is it date? What is the timestamp? Is it nine digit timestamp or four digit um, or year month scenario? Um, if it is a number, is it a num double or an integer or a float? You know, first you create the DDL and then you have a DDL created. That's your target table. And before that, you have a stage table where you load all this stage table into an incremental information. And from that stage table, you load it into final table. So source, stage, then final. Uh, so final DDL, so stage DDL and but one pipeline from source to stage, another pipeline from stage to final. So all these steps, um, I don't say they go away. They still stay in a very complex scenario. And as we are learning, it's just public reviewed now. So we are learning about it, but these kind of things can be eliminated. And I'm, so Snowflake is thinking to make life easier. So we are going in that direction. Maybe in the future, they come up with something else where uh, it's automatically refreshed and whatever rows which are coming in. The only problem right now what we have is, I don't think it's a problem. I should not say it's a problem. The only limitations what we have is there are some functions which won't work. There are some functions which won't work, but I if it, uh, I have been working on this for the last 15, 20 days. I don't see major functional. Uh, the, all the standard areas what we use, it's working. Uh, there are some specific functions like uh, uh, which will may not work that will work in the future but yeah that's that's the stage to final becomes easier so there's no stage in fact in a way if you don't want uh, to implement it but it's it's a give or take how you react to your architecture but if you want to directly dump it this can manage incremental for you thank you Rako, for sharing such an insightful uh... Um, information about this new feature and I hope that it will really help uh, our community uh, to uh, uh, like utilize this new feature for solving their problems. Um, thank you viewers for watching this video and do keep following us for so, uh, such insights and uh, hopefully we will come up with more things that will be really helpful for you in future. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye.